Hello and welcome to the 31st episode of the Saints Prime Podcast. I'm joined with Harry. Hello there. Also joined with Jamie. Hello everyone listening. How's it going? You good? I mean, this is very last minute, I so we might be... Quite a laid back day, done some reading, reading a book Ooh. called Stairways to Heaven. But you can it, read? A Led Zeppelin know, book? Rebuilding the British film history. <coughs> oh, I thought it was a Led Zeppelin joke. No, I'm man. There we go. Is there anything to report? Anything uh, I got battered in five size, but that's just a weekly basis to be a weekly thing to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Apart from that, nothing. Nothing to be fair. Ollie, nothing, what are you been doing? On. You don't normally ask you that question. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, I've been working. Hence why, if you watch it on the YouTube, I've got a, a show. I literally got straight in with press record. So oh, commitment levels. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Commitment levels. That's why I'm wearing a shirt. But. Um, yeah, I've I've found it. You know the um. So I'm in Bristol at the moment, and you know how I said I wanted to go to the, uh, I wanted to go to a Bristol game. Well, mm. they played Bromley. I didn't go. It went to a replay, so I'm glad I didn't go and watch it. But the replay was at Bromley. I was talking to someone about a work because they went and watched it. Turns out, um, the Bromley Stadium is quite small, but it's quite new. It's like an artificial pitch, and you know, like nice lighting and well done mm. and stuff like that. And a goal got disallowed because a player threw the ball and it kind of scuffled and hit around and went in the back of the net. Like this mm. guy absolutely lobbed it from 30 yards and it went in, took off a couple of people. But because it went in from a throw and the ref disallowed it. Mm. And their fans got so angry that one of them <laughs> threw a flare on the pitch. <laughs> oh, no. But it's an artificial pitch, right? So oh, it man. went up. It went up, so <laughs> there's a patch where Sorry. where the flare was. There's about a patch of probably about two meters diameter of where there was a burnt hole from the flare <laughs> inside this artificial pit. This... And I just thought it's absolutely amazing with that happening and the uh, the goalkeeper that took the light off that uh, non-league team's ground. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly summarizes <laughs> non-league football. That was just absolutely brilliant. I I so wish I went and watched it because that would have been entertainment in itself but same with me of the non-eating thing I really wish I went to that game in the end because mm. that would be crazy mm. yeah I just thought I'd tell you that story because it was quite funny I, I found an interesting yeah. story actually too yeah. I, think. Cool. I said I found the story interesting oh okay. I thought you said <laughs> you had an interesting story my bad okay, uh, I, think so I can tell an interesting story if you want but it's not really for it. it or should we right. keep it Saints related I was going to say Saints related that's for I'm not there so yay oh yes you're going to do them then? <laughs> Wait, what? On. We said, let's do some questions. And you yeah. just went, oh, okay. is it questions? <laughs> questions number oh, one. Man. Question number one is, you think Arsenal fans would be gutted that Mourinho went to Spurs as they could have gotten? Um, question, who asked the question, Henry? It was a Dan Hurst at 96. Like Law of like averages, that. it will be Dan Hurst at 96. That is very true. Um, not necessarily. I don't think Mourinho would have suited their style of play. Whether Maria doesn't really suit the style of players to Spurs, so that'll be quite interesting to see how it goes down. Because um, Maria is quite a boring football tactics, so a way of those aggression, mm. hard to play against, hard to score, where Pochettino, the Lord and Saviour, come back to Southampton, um, he's quite <laughs> a free flowing, very stylish football. Yeah, that's no, true. And uh, you speak to a lot of um, speak to a lot of Arsenal fans. They seem like they didn't actually want. Mourinho, uh, they seemed like there is something they don't want. I know they haven't won a load, a load of trophies in a while, but they said, no, we don't want it. It only bring us backwards. Um, but it seems like Spurs fans are more devastated that Pochettino's left rather than Mourinho's appointment. Because mm. mm-hmm. obviously what they're looking for is trophies now. That's the only thing they haven't got so far in their five or six years of success. So they've brought Mourinho in for that, but are they, you know, are they actually going to get that? Is Mourinho going to be able to get them up the league or is it just going to be a FA Cup or a Carling Cup and that's mm. him getting the trophies and then leaving after two years three uh, years three. He stays around is that his three I thought it's his second year that he normally uh, is um, yeah I was watching a Sky Sports thing this morning mm. so they normally sticks around for three years and that's it where Tottenham have decided to sacrifice their long term longevity yeah. rather than short term success Mm. I thought it was quite interesting to see. I think, just... I think Mikey made the comparison that he's the uh, top six Sam Allardyce, didn't he? Something like that, that he gets you mm. results and then ends up leaving. That's a very good point, actually. 
there you go. Yeah. We mentioned Mikey without him even being there. He'd be happy with that. <laughs> do, you think, uh, do you think they might have got Mourinho? Because they might be hoping that he'll be able to turn the head of Ericsson, Vertonghen and de Villarreal to sign new contracts. Because if, if they've now seen that they've got a world... Uh, Pochettino's obviously a world-class manager, but if they've got a, a renowned manager that's known for winning trophies, yeah. and is also reportedly earning £88,000 a week more than any of the players... Really? Do you think? I, saw I don't know where I saw that. Year. It was somewhere on a tweet. But do you think Tottenham now are going to sacrifice everything they stood for now that they've got Mourinho? Sort of, sort of break yeah. that well, way. If that's true, then it means the manager's more powerful than the players. Mm. You know, if he can say that I'm the most important one here, and you're either, it gives them, it gives them a, a chance as well. You can <laughs> say you can stick with me and sign a contract, or you can go in the summer like you were planning to anyway. It gives Mourinho that kind of choice to them, and see if they true, you know, if they do think they've got something to prove in Tottenham, they can stay. And if they if they're not bothered, then they can go anyway. Mm. It's not Mourinho's loss. Like that's the difference. Mm. So there we go. But anyway, any Saints questions, Harry? <laughs> uh, it's Dan Hersey double. All this talk about signings in January, I don't believe we will. Do you? The um, I'm not too keen on this um, American one being linked oh, to. Not really. I think we should be signing a proven centre back. Even obviously not a extra, you know, a bit more proven than some random guy from the MLS. Mm. Where it's not very reliable. No. Well, it's a reliable source, but it's just a not very reliable player. As we have no idea who he is, and we need a proven player in the circumstances we're in. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> I agree yeah. with that. It's, it's, I'm making well, good well, points well, today. You do. Everyone needs to respect me now. Maybe yeah. at the start of the season I would have taken him, but like yes. midway through as a sort of firefighter centre back, I don't really think it's. I don't. Th- I think. I don't think. I don't think it would change that much. I think we just think... need experience. I think that's what we're going to aim for, really, isn't it? We need because most players we sign for are the under twenty five or whatever, and room to grow. But to be honest, it's we're kind of on halt with the grow, and we are. We need performances, so if we need a more veteran centre back, then it might be something we might have to look at, even if it's just short term on a couple of years. Yeah, you love. Well, it's just we really to do that's what they try to do anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you put pick someone on their in their prime, twenty eight, twenty seven, and put them on a two year contract, and said we want to stabilise this, can can you do it? Hopefully, you know, our thirty three year old Portuguese. Man playing centre back called Jose Fonte. Huh. I'm sure there's slightly better options out there, but <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. Any Forsters? No, I think I think that's right. I just don't know where. I can't think of an experienced player off the top of my head that would come. But that's mm-hmm. what the scouts are. That's what the scouts are there for to try and yeah. find one. That's we don't get paid for that, do we? Exactly, we don't get paid at all. <laughs> no, we don't. Right, number three is from. Ozzy Tellman. So, a new guy. I don't think I've ha- had a question from him before. Yeah, Predictions on our position point. at the end of the season. Where are we going to finish? End of the season. Right now. Quick one sentence. Uh, uh, this season. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm going to say. I'm going to say. You never heard this from me before. <laughs> you, uh, I'm going to say. 17th. No, I'll, say I'll say 16. I'll say 16. I'm just hoping there's, there's uh, teams there's worse than us in the league. positivity coming into there, but I'm thinking hopefully we've got enough. Like, I would like to see the epic survival meme come back. The yeah. Saints nearly getting relegated. Wow. Then we see our players making memes, how he survived. I quite like that as women. Mark Hughes, the great escape. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's a great meme for Southampton. I mean, I'd oh, yeah. like us to go on a, a winning streak or something like that. That's what yeah. I like. <laughs> that's not as exciting as a last day of surviving. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, and finally, Alex Jones. Oh, yes. Jones. Joe. Alex Jones. A just mm-hmm. as a one word thing. Do you think Ralph will be sacked before January? Absolutely not. No. The board have to back no. in. If sacking's not the way forward, there's no one out there would be good enough to come 100%. in. No one with his pedigree. So, yeah. I don't think unless, so. Unless they're going to go with Sam Allardyce, I can't see him changing <laughs> until at least February, yeah. unless everything just 
stuff hits the fan. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, so is that all the questions? Uh, yeah, that's that's the four questions. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have we don't have Mikey this week. However, he has hey. still put some input into the into the chat for us to talk about. So, do we want to do the the Mikey corner? <laughs> I don't know. Let's just go through. I'll just read through some of the points that he's suggested for us to talk about. <laughs> First of all, uh, WhoScored.com have rated their worst Premier League team so far. How many Saints players do you reckon are in it? Are in it? Um, as I've seen it, I'm going to guess. <laughs> Four was it? Over a third of the team. Yeah, us. Saints the Saints players. Yeah. Fans. So I'll tell you who it and is. So five, if, I... if you include Schneidlin, but as ex Saints <laughs> fans, anyway. Though. It's going to sake, right? Just keep going. Just um, so my neighbours just have yeah. two. Um, so Angus That's Garner basically scored. seven then links linked to us in general. <laughs> anyway. I can read the score. So uh, <laughs> the lowest rated we have is Ryan Bertrand, who, who's on a six point really? one one, uh, and then Miles Sheed on a six point one two, Angus Gunn on a six point one nine, and Che Adams on a six point two seven. So there that you go, red that. card really plummeted his score. Yeah, didn't it? I guess so. Uh, so thoughts on that, guys? I mean, do you think that's? I just really. I mean, the fact that there's only one Watford player in there, but there's four of ours. Do you reckon that's yeah. justified? It's hard uh, to argue. Watford, we've had lots of standout bad players, and Watford's just terrible in general. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, they're just underperforming, and they've also probably drawn more games, and they've now got more points than us. So I guess it's weird that there's no Norwich players yet. They're they're sat bottom of the league. Which is you can see it has a very good article then, Tizzo, can't you? <laughs> Mikey loves his who scored websites, doesn't he? It's just <laughs> yeah. No, but most of it I can, I can see, but uh, obviously it's understandable. We've got three of our defensive players due to the fact that mm. we conceded nine, so that plummeted their score. And Che Adams, who's started the majority of the games and hasn't scored, and probably in some people's eyes missed a couple sitters. So. Stats wise, that's it's not wrong to be fair. No. Okay. Uh, a fun fact that's a bit uh, more a lighter side than yours there, Ollie, is if Southampton and any league points counted was just away games, we'd be in eighth position currently. Nice. Um, and that's true. What's your and thought also, on that people? What I was gonna say, what you're about to say is if it's only Southampton results, we'd be tough. There's only Southampton <laughs> um, would be tough. Minus two goal difference, not too bad as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, my thoughts on that. First of all, my thought was how smooth Jamie's transition into that point was. Can we just appreciate how good that was? I, I'm, uh, always say, I'm on ball today. I'm really, I'm really I'm good. I'm on ball today. I'm on the ball. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, my, my thoughts, I think we're our team is set up to play well away. I think a five at the back formation in the way we counter press is a, a way formation however i don't think we have a home fit formation because we're so poor at home it's almost like our away games are all <laughs> negative fan <Yeah>. base <laughs> that, that shouldn't, I, think, I, I think our our atmosphere before the game and 10 minutes in is always consistent as always and good because the performance is good however it works both ways i don't think i don't think you can um rely on the fans or as much as you can say it i don't think it's fair on the fans to be charting 90 minutes the whole way through the game because our fan base just aren't that strong. And I, I don't see us turning that over whatever committees you want to make on Twitter or whatever. I don't think that's going to change around that quickly. Um, but also, yeah, um, I I think also you need the, the players to be able to do something to spark that reaction off the fans. You can't just... Mm. Yeah, suggest for them to know. And, you know, it, uh, it's nice to think that we would go 90 minutes through like the... Bayern Munich fans who go, you know, whatever fixtures sing the whole way through, but our fan base just that's not us. It's, 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 not. it's just not quite fill them away, am I right, Harry? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That doesn't yeah. feel like this season, full of the way. Mm. That feels like, feels like last very season. long, doesn't it? Oh, this positive, season. positive results. What was what that? That's yeah. strange. Your thoughts, Tiz, on the, uh, the away. League. Result, yeah, the away league, if you want to call it that. It's I think point. it's it's, diff- <laughs> it's difficult, but obviously the, the players seem to not prefer playing away, but obviously our tactic works better away, and mm. our, our two results did 
were slightly lucky, you could say, because if VAR obviously wasn't involved, I think we'd be bottom of the league if it wasn't for VAR. So yeah, yeah, we're bottom home results anyway. So we did, we did get slightly lucky, but also you've got to earn luck in a sense. So I guess it's I guess it's fair. Mm, that's true. Okay, do you want me to go into the next point of Mikey Corner? Mikey's second point of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, so he's got some information from um, Infogol. Basically, he's talking about the strength of the schedule. Uh, basically, uh, we have the easiest upcoming fixtures in the Premier League, according to the XG. Not too sure about the what exactly that means, but still, while Everton still. have increasingly tough fixture after their meeting with Newcastle on the weekend, I guess. So I guess that's that's going ahead to our the next games that we face in the fact that we have very nice fixtures coming up. Um, mm. I don't know how they've done the points, but right. they've given us an average difficulty of 16. I'm not quite sure that is, but um, you look at... Is that uh, 16 for the league? No, that... they, they're basically they've got their scoring system in for goal of difficulty of match and yeah. the value they've... Basically, the higher the value, the... What's the I best? Like, I, I think it's like... So, we've got 16, which, which is the highest. Everton have got the worst, which is 6.8. So... Yeah. So basically, they're saying Everton have got a very hard fixture list. We have a very nice fixture list. So, um, basically, my th- my thoughts from there is we've got a good chance to get some points up, but do we have the morale to be able to get the results? That's the, that's the difference, isn't it? Has the yeah. morale already been shot, or can we actually p- start picking up results and spur on from there? I thought the game to get points was Everton and San Luis in from there, but you know I think what it's it's difficult to write a game off already. But you know I know Unai Emery's on, in trouble, but once we get past this Arsenal game, even if we don't get anything, then they've got to pick themselves up for the next two. I know you shouldn't really it should take one game as it comes and everything mm. like that, but let's be honest, all our eyes mainly are, are on that quick Watford at five thirty, then Tuesday or Wednesday night of Norwich, mm. so it's. I think it's it's fair enough. It's good to judge because then you can see how difficult your your fixtures are. I think like a week ago I saw that we had the toughest opening set of fixtures until this point, mm, and then for the rest it. the rest of the season we've got like the nineteenth part, like sort of basically the second easiest. Mm. But then again, it is the Premier League, and any team can turn up at any point. So. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, Jamie, we'll be keeping you up. That's <laughs> screaming in Tizar's that's background. That's just not, it's, <laughs> it's not my it's background. My, I think it's mine, don't worry. Um, we'll plow up. <laughs> plow on. Um, so, uh, Jamie, your thoughts about the upcoming fixture list? I said, I was about to say, like Tizard mentioned there, we had a very rough start to the season, quite a difficult teams to um, play up against. Yeah. However, I do believe that we should get at least. Our next three games needs to be getting six points. Sorry, that's a bit. Six, po- six to four points, I'd preferably say. Okay. And as I was talking about earlier, saying he's thinking four to two. Whether I'm a bit more optimistic than that one there. No, I was thinking two to four for the Watford and yes. Norwich game. So I'm probably three. Three, to, three to six in the next three. But I would like more. Obviously. Yeah. But no, it should be interesting. As I said, we normally do quite good after um international break after a bit of a break mm. we like the clo- we haven't mentioned the closed door friendly yeah that's true yeah so we what was it we won 4-0 was it yeah 4-0 nil. 4-0 nil. good to actually hear Saints winning um <laughs> who's goal scorers again was it apparently Che Adams scored but apparently it was Che Adams all over for some yeah, reason some... I don't know it was Vestergaard Shane Long and Danny Ings there you go. So I don't know how much level of importance that game has, but it was. Yeah. So you're just getting our confidence up, Harry. Because it's, 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 it's good to hear we. The size of morale was pretty woo, <laughs> down low, but now yeah. maybe a bit of constantly four 0 against maybe a really rubbish team. However, that will give them that bit of stride to go into the Arsenal game a bit of hope. Nice. Yes. Yeah, I agree with that. James. I hope so. So I think we've we've covered all the points from Mikey's corner. Mikey we has shall... one other one that was oh, about Fraser Forster. Oh, yeah. go on then. What eyeing up an England call up? But yeah. for me, if you play as bad as it sounds, Scott Sinclair looked really really good in the Scottish League two years ago, and he didn't get anywhere near it. So he is think... He's not. There's not just the Scottish League. He's playing well. He's playing well in the Europe League as well. Yeah. The game against Lazio is absolutely point. amazing. And personally, I rate Pitford that highly. Better than he's definitely better than Nick Pope, hundred mm. percent. 
But I think the the issue Southgate said that he won't pick the players from his top six. You know, like he he's happy to give people from the lower teams a chance. But yeah. I don't think it comes down to that anymore. Yeah, we I are think... lower teams. <laughs> who, yeah, who's yeah. But what I'm saying teams? is, what I'm saying is, he's not sticking with uh, yeah. top six teams. He's sticking with the team that did well for him in the the World Cup. He wants to stick with that that core that he's built. That's obviously performed well. And to you know, ch- you can have all the informed players you want in there. But you still need your core players in there. That's why, you know. You're uh, saying Nick Pope is a core player to our squad. He's part. He was part of that unit, and I think there's still five goalkeepers in front. I think mm. Pickford, Heaton, Pope, Dean Henderson, and then it's probably Forster. Well, if yeah. I do rate Dean Henderson, I think he'll be lo- number one for a long time coming. Yeah. So I think there's there's a long way. As much I'd love to see it. I'd mm. love to see him get a call up. But looking at it. In a impartial view, I, I, it's very difficult. Even even yeah. Jack Butland's because he just, he just loves to see he loves Jack Butland's as it seems. So. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. So that is that the last thing from? Mike? I think that's the last thing, Mike. Mike, okay, so we're gonna but... step away from Mike's corner. Ooh. Should we have? Oh, another interesting conversation oh. topic. Go on then. This is, is the um, championship team of the decade. Yeah. Okay. And there are no Southampton players mentioned. But oh, Billy Sharp was here for the season. And um, yeah, and Ashton's team was Westford, Rango Angle, as we all love him. Wes <laughs> Morgan. <laughs> right. I know, I, I love that guy. Yeah. And Williams, Angle. Friend, Houlihan, Wessingham, Not Hart, Murray, Deeney, and Sharp. There's no yeah. Saints players. What's your thoughts on that? That's oh, sure. Sharp the next player. Billy Sharp player. was the next Saints player, mm. and we're only in the se- we're only once for Sheffield, though. In the last decade, how many seasons were we in the Championship? However, my point here is Ashley Williams has only played six games this season. For um, he's played for Bristol. He didn't play many much for Stoke last season either. He played for yeah. Swansea though, didn't he? Ah, yes, that's yeah, my next point here. Well, we should not argue. Jose Fonte deserves to be in that spot. Uh, but you could say Adam Lallana, uh, Adam Lallana, <laughs> Adam, Adam uh, or Ricky Lambert. Pl- was probably one of the best players. I mean, they got uh, player of the season. Uh, who was it? Was it Lambert that got player of the season? When I'm not sure. Championship? Over Murray. I think Murray deserves to be there, but Troy Dean doesn't deserve to be there. Yeah, I, I don't think it's... it's um, I don't think it's too harsh because you don't really associate Saints with a championship side because we kind well, of... That amazing season we had deserves to be there. Sorry. Yeah, but a lot of teams had amazing seasons, but as we're very... But we're Southampton <laughs> FC. <laughs> Exactly, we're very um, we're massive. To, yeah, we're massive. <laughs> we deserve it because we're massive. Yeah, but um, yeah, okay. I could say there's new, no Newcastle players in there. That's the thing. There's a lot of teams that did well for one season and they've not got players in there. So who was uh, who was the Newcastle striker? They got about thirty goals that season. Was it Dwight Gale? Dwight, Dwight Gale, actually, yeah. Dwight Gale could have a shout because he did play for well for West Brom last season. But then again, he didn't get promoted with them. So, mm-hmm. who's Dwight Gale playing for nowadays? He's still at Newcastle. He's just not doing anything. So he, he'll definitely he'll probably get picked up by a Championship team, yeah. like Huddersfield or something in uh, in the January. There we go. So should we have a look at the Arsenal game then? We've got Let's. got a bit of time. Um, where should we start? Formation. We always seem to do that. Line up. Should we start there? We say it every week. Do we want to see four at the back? Do we want to see five at the back? What do we want to see? With Abbott as their new captain, he'd be quite pumped to get a few goals. So I'm saying five just to be safe. Yeah, that's what okay. I think. Yeah, uh, I think our formation works well away from home. I always say this, and against the big teams, I'm quite confident in our five at the back and our pressing style because it's a realistic way of getting points against the big teams but I worry when it gets to the smaller teams will it be effective however yeah. this time I think as Jamie goes for a walk <laughs> I think um, I think I am quite confident are, are you it is about uh, about the, whole, the way we set up I think it will be an effective way to mm. set up especially because a lot of our goals have come from forcing them to make mistakes and obviously they've yeah. got Socrates at the back they've got David Louise at the back Leno's not always the most sturdy no. Um it's maybe Kieran Tierney because he's new to the league. It's difficult to say. And Bell- Bellerin's only just back from injury. So they do have mistakes within their core. 
Mm-hmm. It's just us making them make those mistakes, and hopefully yeah. that that's probably one of the ways, the best ways that we've got a chance of scoring. And I was just let's just not get counter attack in our final thirds by Aubameyang, by Lacazette, mm. by Nicolas Pepe. And as long as we can do all of that, which seems like quite a high task, there's a good chance we can get a point out of the yeah. game at least. Well, you covered all my points there, I'm afraid. I know, it's so smooth. How do you think we reduce the chances of individual errors during that game? I, for me, it's we, we need to do... I was listening to um, an interview that Heaton did and he, he likes the way Aston Villa play because he's not... Their, their style is don't play at all costs at passing around. Like If, there's, if, the, if it gets just slightly tight, just bang it up the pitch. We, we can't... For, for us in our situation... We can't risk making those stupid individual errors in our final thirds when we've got, like I said, those three attacking players. They're always so dangerous. If they get the chance, they'll score. So we just can't allow them to have constant chances to, you know, say, intercept passes right in front of our box because they'll be on us straight away. Mm. Well, but it's, mm. uh, I'm a bit nervous. I, said. I, want, I think there's a possibility of points here. I think possibly a draw if it is our most likely outcome mm. if we're going okay. for points-wise. Yeah. However, it's just saying who's the threat that Arsenal do have. It's just whether they have the ability to turn up on the day or not. Yeah. That's the and if the chance um, creates itself for us when we're on top of the game, do we go for the kill or are you happy with us conserving for, so say about 60 minutes, there's a change in play that, you know, dramatically changes the game. Say, for instance, a midfielder or a striker gets injured or something like that, or there's a card or something like that, would you be happy for us to sit back and try and keep the point? Do you have us, mm-hmm. us to no, have we... faith in that, or would you prefer us to keep attacking and try and, you know, do we have the confidence to try and go out and win a game against a big team, or are you happy with us kind of taking the point? You know, mm-hmm. what, what, how comfortable you feel? Jamie we Schenker. have we have to go through <laughs> this is the time we have to prove that we are we're not a relegation team here mm-hmm. we need to go for that dub we need to get the three points Perfect. I say we need to as, if Mike is here say bring on Shane Long <laughs> as he's not here I'll say it for him I'll think it seriously yeah. however so yeah Harry uh, Ain't that change score a goal. I, yeah, I don't I don't like it when we I don't like it when we try and conserve a point because we're not very good at staying in the defensive. I think our best way of defending is trying to win the ball back out of the field because mm. like I said, when we get pressurized, there's a a lot of the time we'll crumble, we'll try and pass our way out the back in our own eighteen yard box, so that's where we lose the ball. For yeah. me, you've just got to keep trying to play the game until the last five minutes, ten minutes. If it's if it's still near nil ten minutes to go. Even it's, actually, even then, I'd still want us to keep going because I just don't have confidence in us not making a mistake at the back. So I just prefer if we just kept going and kept going. And maybe if we're one nil up, that's when maybe five minutes ago I'd want to see a more conservative effort. But if it's nil nil, points a goal, there will most likely be a goal because either we'll score it, they'll concede it, you know. Yeah, that will we'll concede. Score it, they'll so. concede it. Not yeah, hopefully, concede. yeah, yeah, solid. But the, with us, there's not, there's never normally a nil nil. So he's got to keep, keep trying That's to get true. something out of the game. Do you Ooh. think Danny Ings is going to keep his form, or do you think it's a chance for other players to try and get on the score sheet this week? I, um, I think he'll score. I'm, I'm very confident in my, our main man, Danny. Yeah, obviously just... he's. Oh, go on, go on. Yeah, my dear, like, mine's a different point. And stuff okay. like this. I was just going to say that obviously he's been such a target for us up front recently. Do you think focus is going to be especially on him if uh, we go for a, a one or a two up front formation, especially if we play a 4-2-3 where there's people out wide? Do you think he's going to be shut down by a defensive midfielder or do you think he still has the quality to uh, uh, progress through even if he's being man-marked or forced out of the game? Wow, I, th- I think Arsenal are just very weak defensively. They don't know who their defensive midfielder is. They don't know who their centre. Like, they know their centre backs are, but their fans don't have any faith in their centre backs. So that's going to be portrayed on the pitch. From you know, if if I, players can feel nervousness, it's their, their wing backs their their strongest point. But if they bomb forward too heavily, say Socrates makes a mistake, David Luiz makes a mistake, Danny Danny's will be there. 
to it. And he's, he's, I know it's to get the top six team or one of the, one of the big six, but he's shown it already this season. How we can get into those tight areas against those top teams. So if there's anyone that I think that will score and lead the line, it, it'll, it'll be Danny Ings. Okay, Jamie, any thoughts? So kids are summing up everything today for us. I know he's been on he's been on the form, isn't he? I think it all around good podcast. My point is, however, Ooh. he will take the main stage between the nets. Well, between the sticks, <laughs> he will go and go. Um, probably McCarthy, I reckon. Mm. You think uh, otherwise, otherwise, I think it looks too um, temporary. If you, mm. I think you have to give McCarthy a good running form, and it also gives gun confidence that he's not just been swapped out because he's on bad form it says to him look I want to give McCarthy a run now see if he can prove his point that kind of thing whereas if you keep chopping and changing whenever there's a bad result they'll just be absolutely terrified to make mistakes when what you should be doing is giving the uh, keepers different opportunities if they're you know showing good performances then they come into the team because they've earned it not the other way around that you've been playing badly and you come out that's really how it should be working so I think McCarthy should should go and go because he deserves a chance. And Gunn's had a while, hasn't taken advantage of it. I think McCarthy should continue his own goal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, fair enough. We have a late entry to Mikey's corner. Um, oh. It's been sent in. Apparently, Celtic have contacted Southampton about the purchase of Elianusi. What was apparently your it's, on that? Apparently, it's eight to ten million. So I'd rather stick stick stay with him and see how we can do really? in the next preseason. But okay. if his head's turns and he wants to stay at Celtic, I, I'd happily see him go. Because we don't like make the end of um, the season, correct? Mm. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I, I'd quite like Saints to say we're not going to do any dealings until he's back on back to us, you know, yeah. and we discuss his future with him. Because I think it's unfair to do negotiations with the actual player present. I think he should be able to um, talk to the talk to the, the coach and talk to the board and say, look, I want to stay at Celtic or look, I want to prove my point. Because what's the point of having a player who's good on the form that doesn't want to be at the club? Mm. So I'd, I'd wait till the summer and say, mm. what do you want to do? Um, maybe give him a run in pre-season. And also, it, dep- it depends where the squad is as well. If we've come off the, a relegation battle again, He's going to be a, a player in red hot form coming into a low morale squad, mm. so I don't think it will hit very well. Um, it'd be interesting to see what would happen there, but I just wait to the end of the season. Yeah. For me, oh, sorry if I cut you off there. No, no, oh, sorry. For me, if he's been in such good form, they've got to pay at least the fee that we pay for him because they're 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 a big club. They're in Europe. I know it's the Scot- Scottish league, but we don't we don't need to sell him. He's on a contract. Mm. You know, we've we've been um, bullied by bigger teams before to sell players. Celtic are Celtic, Celtic are a big team, but they're not that much better, if if better at all. And if Celtic might, you know, every few years they sell their best players, they'll have they'll probably have a kid transfer Kissy. So mm. we we shouldn't feel forced to sell him. We should sell him when we want to, when we need to, yeah. and for a, for a good price as well. Just because he's in such good form, and obviously the Celtic fans seem to love him there, just because of. Because of that form, we don't need to sell them. So. No, that's true. Okay, um, should we get back onto the Arsenal game? Is there any other? Um, I was going to ask. Do you think both teams are going to be attacking, or do you reckon we still should feel cautious coming into this game? Mm-hmm. So both teams got a point to prove. That's the our issue here. That's what I keep mentioning. Yeah. It's just it's a hard it's a hard call. Mm. Yeah, like I said, it's just I'm I'm quite nervous with this game. Yeah, it's going to go. One or two ways, win or lose. There's no draws in my mind. I thought you said the most likely result was a draw. <laughs> I'm, I'm, changing my, I'm changing my mind here and everywhere. I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I, I thought I would just ask, just in case I am going mental, but no, it turns out James going mental. Um, no, I'd be interested. What do you reckon the mentality of the game is going to be? Do you reckon it's going to be quite a cautious affair, or do you reckon it's going to be attack versus attackers? But- First 15 minutes, I think it will be because I think both teams will be nervous not to lose or nervous not to let anything anything out too quickly because obviously Arsenal haven't been playing that well. Unai Emery's under pressure. They won't want to give anything away and same with Arsenal so it could be the battle of managers that could get sacked very soon. Hopefully not from our point of view. I don't want 
I don't want Haas Neutrals to get sacked, but that's it's not my choice. So it could it could happen. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I think if Haas Neutrals does get an early sack, um, do you reckon the fans would have a, a major upset, or do you reckon the fans will get to a point where they don't see Ralph? fitting the system for me I, I, I think the Saints the say, the biggest Saints podcast sadly because it's not us the uh, the Saints FC podcast I believe they followed it's called me. they had a um, they, they did a poll because because after our podcast it's not off the back of this it's just an interesting thing whereas I, I said in our podcast that I thought that most fans wanted him out because the most vocal wanted him out then they did a poll um, mm. Loads of people voted, and the majority of people, by quite some way, want him to stay. So yeah. I think there'd be a bit of uproar. But from what we've seen in reports, it does look like he'll get the January window to sort yeah. it out. But it depends but we, what high profile sense like they're talking about. I think if we see another uh, a run that really persuades the board, so like something really bad, like four, you know, have we lost four times at home now? Yeah, on the like first ever six or seven, or we lost like four, like five games in a row in the league. I think the board might be persuaded despite mm. the fans' reaction. Yeah, but imagine if um, uh, Hassan Hussel got like a uh, Pochettino, ex Saints manager. Imagine if he got sacked tonight and Allardyce got appointed tomorrow <laughs> morning. I think I think we would see probably the most vocal. Disple- like displeasure in a sacking. It seems like most of the managers that have been sacked, most fans have agreed with the the um, the reasoning. However, it seems the board are probably unhappy with the current performances. However, the Saints fans are probably the only ones that see it's it's not really the manager's fault. We can't really do too much else. <laughs> the poor blokes got uh, trying to get the most out of the squad. As as possible, but he just he just like Hassan Hussle just looks like a defeated man because there's nothing he can do. Um, so yeah, uh, the, it's nice to see the, the fans. Sorry, it is, but it's nice to see the fans no, still back. The manager, yeah. Sorry, like you carry on. So, for me, I think whatever happens on Saturday, I think he'll only go if we lose to both Watford and Norwich because those are the two teams that we need to just at least not lose to. That's the that's the thing. If we lose back to back games there, then even I might be thinking, mm, is Oof, he yeah. is he the right is he the right man to lead us forward? And just because he he may not be the right man doesn't take away from the fact that he's a good manager. Mm. It may just mean that the situation the is right so fit. dire that he's just not the right fit. Yeah, it might be that his his, uh, his tactics are just based on players that can actually play football <laughs> and not the Sunday league <laughs> players that can play football. Wow. Yeah, but it's like I I don't imagine say Jose Mourinho and Jurgen Klopp would do especially well with um, I don't know top AFC Totten, mm. but that doesn't mean they're not a good manager. That's mean they're just not they're not used to or good at that situation. Whereas, like, no. it's, say for Hasnews, he might not be good at the relegation battle, but if he chucked him in at Tottenham, he might have, yeah. he might have done well. well. That's what I'm saying. It, it's just, it may just be that the, it may not be the right fit and he's mm. not a relegation... He's a builder and a, mm. an expressive manager, not a tactical and a disciplined manager. You know, that mm. might be what we need. I can't... It's bad because I can't really think of a team that springs to mind in the fact that they had a relegation battle and then sprung on the next year as a quality team. Maybe Crystal Palace, maybe, when Hodgson came on. Oh, no, a very good team, Molly. Um, Do you remember when Leicester won the league? Uh, well, yeah, but that was, uh, <laughs> that was a very fluke year, wasn't it? Let's be oh, honest. Like, a slight uh, anomaly. Where did, where did Liverpool finish that year? Uh, uh, eighth or seventh. Yeah, Just exactly. Eighth. Chelsea so, were 10th. I mean, that was a pretty fluke year, to be honest. But, I, yeah, as someone in more recent history, like Crystal Palace, the fact that they lost all four games, changed the manager and then finished, it was something like 12th that season, wasn't it? Um, I don't know whether we've got that in us with the squad of players we've got. Do we have that, that um, so tank you, power to turn it that... Uh, are you insinuating you want Tony Pulis to take charge or something? No. Apparently he's looking at the situation that's, that's that is, in West Ham. Harry, can you agree here, can't you? I'm hearing Tony Pulis vibes, Molly. That's what happened with that's that's Palace. Happened. They that's bought... not quite what I thought. <laughs> I've got to be honest. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Any other thing? Any other? Oh, should we do predictions then? As we've kind of covered most things. Um, one all. Yeah. One all. Yeah, one all. I'm oh, gonna go. So cheeky. <laughs> one nil. Southampton. Ooh. Clean sheet. Clean Danny, sheet. Danny Ingsy. Um, Danny Ingsy. Kind of banging in. Do you, Adams. do you think Danny Ings is going to be man marked out of the game or do you reckon he's still oh 100% well they'll attempt to man mark him but then they'll realise he's a top quality striker <laughs> yeah yeah and he'll box it. do you think Arsenal have the quality to man mark him out of the game because obviously they've got good players but that centre back partnership isn't something that I would be filled with confidence in the Southampton team they're master a, a top six Arsenal team ooh yeah um but yeah, so I, I went with one all. I think that's me trying to be a, as uplifting as possible because that's kind of best result I can see. I don't know whether, but uh, yeah, uh, we'll see how it goes. We will, we'll do a should we do a reaction podcast after? Are you guys up for that? Yeah, sure. depends on what time I'm back. I might have to. Might I will have go to do something. this weekend. I'm filming on Saturday. Okay, we'll we'll do the admin afterwards, but uh, we'll try and get a reaction yeah. on the weekend. Stay tuned for that and try and um. Have a look for that. We'll try and do a reaction to the game afterwards. Try and hopefully it won't be labelled pathetic. <laughs> like the no. Last... Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. yeah hopefully that... it won't be labelled as mo- the majority. Have dramatic? we won a game? So have we got a, even? A, we haven't got a point since we started the reaction podcast. No, so. we haven't. <laughs> but that's the thing. We want we want <laughs> react- to see our immediate reactions straight. Ollie, up. I'm not doing the reaction podcast anymore, mate. No. <laughs> we, we've, we've cursed Southampton. <laughs> Well, we'll see what the result is first before oh, before dear. the reaction thing. Um, but yeah, so if you do want to stay tuned to see the next one, then have a look at us on Twitter. The notifications come out out there when it should be going up. When it does come live, I'll try and keep you updated. The Instagrams where all the questions are: Tizard, Fillerman, Saint Prime. Normally on Wednesdays. Rarely nowadays on Thursday mornings because I'm more <laughs> up to date with it. So normally it will be Wednesdays at some point. So keep your eyes peeled yeah. and it will probably be there. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Jamie underscore Alan. That is low. That is low. Is that how low it's come to? I'm getting many new followers recently. Ollie. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, fantastic. Yeah, I think that's that's everything. If you do want to watch our lovely mugs talking, then it's available on YouTube. Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, if you want to see this odd's dirty uni room, I mean, what is that it's happening in the corner? Not the... Look at that. Look at those spider webs in the corner. What is it's that? Not... It's black mould. <laughs> that is. What, what are you expecting, that? Derby, really? What is that? <laughs> it's mould, mate. Clean up your room, Jesus. It's, it's clean. Fire. It's clean. Just... Can the problem that? is my room, oh, my dirt. room all wait right. My, I'm not going to move the camera. My room seemingly just leaks, and I don't know why. Every it's single day, I'm, every it's single day, I'm mopping up. There's, there's, there's like a there's like a shelf bit there that the window's right next it's, to it, and the moisture that, always just seeps through. Look at that dirt around the window. Can you see that? Is well, that just me? Right. Just, look at that room. What? That's disgusting. Clean the room. Thank you very much it's for listening, clean, everyone. Thank you very much for listening. Very very we, go, we go completely off topic for the last two minutes. but yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Uh, stay tuned for the Reaction Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>